Every year about this time, as we're um, about to face a snowstorm and they're either local communities or the State Highway Department puts salt um, on our roads to uh, prevent it from getting iced, we get questions about what's the impact um, of that salt on the aquatic system. So um, in freshwater systems, there was a study that was actually done up in Baltimore looking at streams and in particular looking at chloride. Chloride, you know, salt is um, sodium chloride. Um, what they have found in these streams is they found elevated levels of chloride, um, which can be toxic to critters that live in the stream. Um, and they found these elevated levels not just during um, snow melt, but actually um, year round, they've seen an increasing trend in chloride in our freshwater streams. So um, that's not, again, not good news for the critters that live in the stream because it's actually being found in some cases at levels that would be toxic to them that would kill them. Um, in saltwater um, systems, so like in the Chesapeake Bay where it's brackish, there actually is um, a fair amount of chloride already in the system, so the animals in the bay aren't necessarily going to be responding um, negatively to um, salt that enters our waterways. What we're seeing in terms of trends in salt, I, again, I mentioned this uh, study that was done in Baltimore streams um, where they actually saw an increase in, in chloride over time, again, probably related to the use of salt on our waterways. Um, that said, uh, we do know that in Maryland, for example, that the State Highway Administration is really trying to do a better job of managing the salt that they use. Probably the best thing that we all can use from you, know, from you on your sidewalks to your local community to the State Highway Administration that's you know, out on our roads is to just do a better job of applying the salt, try to use less, try to store it in ways where it doesn't um, run off, so try to do a better uh, job of managing it. Managing it. And, and what we've seen, at least in that regard, is that we, we are doing a better job. Salt also, in many cases, doesn't leave the land, and so you can see um, vegetation dying. If there's too much salt's been applied, that's probably common. You know, on the side of the roads, you can see sort of vegetation dying off. Um, there are also certain species of birds that can be uh, relatively sensitive to salt, and, and I don't think we know a lot about those impacts within the Bay region, but certainly there are studies that show that, that birds and other mammals um, and wildlife can also be impacted by too much salt. So the, the primary component of, of salt that's typically used, as I mentioned, is sodium chloride, so that's the chemical um, formula for salt, but there are other additives that are frequently, or even impurities that are in there. Those can include um, trace metals that can be toxic. Um, there are some forms of salt that actually have as an anti-caking device cyanide, which is also really toxic. Um, so if we, if we um, want to do a better job of, of applying salt, it's best to look for brands that have fewer of those impurities. And the first thing we can do is, is try to use less of whatever we're using. So that's the, you know, prevent any from getting out there. There are some more environmentally friendly alternatives on the market, like you could go to Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, the active ingredient in them is, is uh, CMA or calcium magnesium acetate, I believe it is called, um, which doesn't have chloride in it. It's typically more expensive, um, so, it, but if you're a homeowner, you're not using very, very much, that might be a good alternative to um, for you. Uh, another thing is just to put sand down. You know, really one reason why we, we salt our streets is for the traction. Um, there are a lot of places like in the Northwest that actually don't use much salt. They just put sand down on their highways that gives us traction, gives your car traction. So that's um, also a, a good alternative.